Freedom Planet 2 later tonight. Take it away, Spike. Thank you so much, Sakura. Welcome back, everyone, to Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online. I hope you all enjoyed that absolutely amazing display of talent and just wild gameplay, wild mechanics going on with the Super Mario All-Star Shuffler Sky Bills. You absolutely killed it. And coming up right after this run of Katana Zero, another runner who's going to kill it, Uranium Anchor, my good friend in here, going to be taking on not Blaster Master, not Metal Storm, actually Freedom Planet 2. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing pretty good, Spike. I'm I'm excited to be able to do this run. Heck yeah, man. I it was one of those where I almost had to do take a little bit of a double take at the schedule when it first came out. <laughs> I said, Whoa, wait, Uranium Maker. I, I just said it there. I'm used to, you know, Blaster Master, Metal Storm, you know, kind of those classic NES games. Taking on Freedom Planet 2, a modern, brilliant speed game. What made you decide on wanting to come back and start running this? So honestly, it's uh I Back when Freedom Planet One had been in the marathons a couple of times, I remember I picked up I picked it up on the Humble Bundle, um, and then after Flatter V's M Mila run back in mm -hmm. I want to say it was 2016, um, I asked Punchy, who is going to be uh, commentating for the run later, I asked him, "Hey, why does nobody play Carol? I thought it, it, it seems like is she just not uh, uh, not as interesting movement, um, and for or for other reasons and." Uh, so that was basically what made me decide, okay, I want to actually try and work on Carol. Um, I never got it to the point where it was uh, good enough for a marathon, um, uh, partially because Revolution, is, who is also going to be commentating for this run, is just, was just so much better at, it, at the time. Sure. Um, but when Freedom Planet 2 got announced, I thought, okay, cool, this, I might work on this when it comes out, but... Uh, it took a while, it took a while to come out. It was I forget exactly when it was announced, but it was it was I want to say four or five years ago. Um, and we'd been kind of I've been kind of keeping an eye on it. Um, I played the sample version a couple times just to get an idea of uh, how it would feel. And then when it came out, it came out right in the middle of the first submission period. And so I thought, okay, mm -hmm. so I've got a couple of months to work window. on. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple months to work on this and get it ready. And uh, for a little while, Carol was actually the most popular character that people were working on because uh, she, she was just so much improved from the original game. She had a lot more movement options. Um, and I'm I don't know if Puxel is listening, but uh, I am going to be running on the ceiling a little bit. <laughs> All right, it's a, all right. Because it's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a Sonic inspired game, so yeah, I'm going to be yeah. on the ceiling a little bit. Um, but also, one of the new things that got introduced for the sequel with Carol is uh, she has a jump disc. She can throw the disc, and it's basically a free grappling hook to wherever she wants to go. Oh, that's um, and, so sick! <laughs> and grappling hooks are also one of my favorite game mechanics. So that really caught my attention when I saw that in the preview video uh, years and years ago. Um, so I'm going to be making pretty heavy use of that too. And, uh, so me and, uh, me and Frogmoss, who is also going to be doing commentate, uh, commentary. We had, we had a whole posse on the commentator yeah, crew tonight. It's, That's exciting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a nice big crowd. Uh, me and Frogmoss went back and forth on who had, uh, the record for Carol for a while. Um, we were originally hoping to pitch it as a race and they didn't take the race for whatever reason. Um, but, uh, they but he is going to be on commentary and he was a backup runner. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to, to hear what he has to say during my run. Um, but yeah, uh, I haven't even played the other characters in the sequel yet. I'll be uh, honest with you. <laughs> it's I, pretty I new. Yeah. I, would, I mean, yeah, it only came out in September. Um, so I, I'm saving that for, for after I get home. I, I'll probably be streaming the other characters uh, just a casual playthrough. I, I doubt I'm going to speed run any of them anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's like, it's like you say with the Freedom Planet series. It's, it's not minor difference to you differences between the characters. You watch runs of Freedom Planet 1, the characters are vastly different in how they play and what their oh, yeah, applications are. So it's really cool to hear about Carol there with her grappling hook mechanics right there or like, you know, the the, the disc she's going to be utilizing. Yeah. I'm very excited to see this run. I want to jump ahead a little bit in our interview because there is an incentive for this run that needs to be met. And UA, I want you to sell it to me. Why do we need to be donating towards this post-game incentive? Yeah, so normally... Uh, during the game, there is a section of the game called the Battlesphere. Uh, mm -hmm. It's required to do four 
challenges in the battle sphere as part of the story. However, there's also an additional, I want to say 11 challenges um, that you would do to unlock some time capsules. And if you get all the time capsules, it unlocks this final stage that would actually change the cutscene for the normal ending, final boss. Okay. Um, and then you would go on to the, to the weapons core stage and uh, fight a super boss there. Uh, I won't be doing those extra battle sphere challenges because it would take probably 25 minutes. So this is <laughs> okay, gonna, yeah. So We're this already is behind gonna, schedule for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this <laughs> is just going to be that bonus stage at the end after the main run. Um, it's going to be about six minutes if I do it right mm -hmm. the first try. Uh, and I really hope I do. <laughs> yeah, we'll, you were we'll talking see. about like a little bit of nerves. It's actually a pretty big challenge. Maybe the boss fight within that and everything. Yeah, the, the level itself isn't too hard, but the boss, if you're trying to do it fast, which obviously I'm going to be trying to do it fast, uh, sure. it gets, gets, pretty, mm -hmm. gets pretty sketchy. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> But, you heard um, it. You heard it, chat. Make sure you get in those donations. Make sure we get all of our donations met here on the final 24 hours of AGDQ 2023. Make you a take on this super challenging final level and boss. I want to give you one more question before I let you get out of here. Just quite simply, why should myself and many others watching, it's a new speed game, Freedom Planet 2, why should people be picking this up? What's so hot about it? Well, so um, for Freedom Planet 2, especially since it is so new, there's still tech discoveries coming right now. And actually, the developers of the game Galaxy Trail, they've been really responsive in addressing bugs. They actually released a patch today. Oh, which, wow. <laughs> which scared me a little bit, but I did a full run. Oh, no, what I did, a, <laughs> what I did a full run. And everything seemed to be doing all right, but it kind okay. of scared me when they said, "Oh yeah, there's a new patch out on the beta branch. Go try it." I was like, uh, okay, and I did, <laughs> and everything. Like GDQ run, no. <laughs> yeah, but um, like the big thing is uh, there were some uns there were some cutscenes that weren't skippable. Um, they those are now skippable. That saves like almost three months on its own. Oh wow. Um, there there was one uh, glitch that I was looking forward to showing off that got patched out, unfortunately. But the cutscene changes uh, more than make up for that. Um, so, but the, in general, the, the developers of the game are really responsive to addressing, uh, addressing things that, uh, not only are in, in, in interest to speedrunners, but just in general, like making the game nice and stable. Um, and awesome. so, so th there's a lot of stuff that's still in flux right now, uh, as people discover new things like, um, the game is kind it's not i'm not going to say it's glitch free certainly but uh, it's relatively solid right now but people are definitely trying to break it in half absolutely those new speed games that pioneer period anybody watching who's like i love fast sonic-esque movement and just trying to see yeah. what the new strategies are what kind of routes we can come up with make sure to get into freedom planet to watch ua's run tonight maybe get inspired by that ua it's always a pleasure to sit here and get to chit chat with you i do want to remind you all behind ua i think we maybe have in the camera right there uh you got that little arbor statue on the table table from Final Fantasy 14. That is a $50 minimum donation. And on the couch in the back, one of the 12 PlayStation 5s left <laughs> on the planet. If you donate $5, that's right, $5, you get into the drawing for that PS5 going up until uh, the start of the Blinks run, coming up two runs after Freedom Planet 2. I I have never heard a greater inspiration to throw down some dollary dues during yep. one of these marathons. $5, you're in the drawing for that PS5. $50 to get in for the Arbert statue as well. UA, thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck on Freedom Planet 2. I'm looking forward to the run, my man. Thank you. Thank you. Let's send it back up to the front, everyone, for more AGDQ 2023. Everybody enjoy Katana Zero. See ya. Planet 2. Hi everybody, Uranium Manker here. Uh, I'm gonna be running Freedom Planet 2 Carol for y'all. Um, my, I have three commentators, uh, if they would like to introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Punchy. You might remember me from earlier in the marathon. I ran a Dreamcast game, but I also worked on this game for three years as one of the core testing staff, which makes this technically dev commentary. Indeed it does. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Frog. I, uh, run this category as well. That's all the qualifications I have to be here, I guess. <laughs>
that's more right now. Hello, people. I am Rebel, Revolution, uh, another runner of Freedom Planet, uh, Freedom Planet and Freedom Planet 2. On this game, I run another category, but also a runner of the Green Cat in the first version. So, well, let's go and support UA. So, yep. he's going to do a great run for us. And as you can see, uh, I've played nothing but Carol. I haven't even played the other characters yet. I think I mentioned this in the interview. Oh, before I forget, I bought this shirt like six years ago. Uh, with the intent of trying to get it into uh, Freedom Planet 1 into the marathon, and so this is like an accidental long game. I had absolutely had to wear this. Hopefully it's visible on the camera. Uh, I meant to mention that during the interview, but I didn't have time, so uh, let's go ahead we and get made, We made four whole characters, and you have ten save files of the same one. I, I, I promise you I'll play the other three when I get home, but... Uh, Make, making, making loud sighing yeah. noises into the microphone. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be starting on beginner. Uh, this doesn't really affect the run too much, but it does give me a uh, free element burst, which is uh, something I'm going to be using throughout the run. So it just saves me a shopping trip, um, as well as uh, having to actually save up enough gems to buy it. So that's why... That's pretty much the only reason I'm playing on beginner. Um, nothing else really super matters. Um, but to clarify, the difficulties just change what you start with. They don't actually affect the game itself. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so, it changes uh, uh, not only items, just a couple I, settings, sorry, like I, I, assist I would settings. Like to, can I, I would like to go ahead and get the run started. And sorry, you can, yeah, you can sure. explain this while I'm playing through the first stage. <laughs> so the count, uh, let's see, so countdown in three, two, one, go. Go! Begin. All right, first thing I'm going to do is turn off auto guard uh, because I don't like it. <laughs> That's one of the settings timing. I mentioned, yes. <laughs> yeah, when you start a beginner, uh, it puts uh, auto guard on by default. So. Probably should have thought about that. That's why I play an expert. Well, uh, yes, guard, guard is a mechanic where you can press a button to do like a spot dodge that like lets you go through an attack invincibly. Anyway. Uh, they don't want it on because it will interfere with platforming. This is Carol. She does kicks in the air and the kicks make her go fast. That was actually a surprisingly late addition to her kit in development. She didn't have that for a while. Really? And then one day, one of the programmers added it in, quote, a fit of annoyance. Yes. I, I, they, they were like, they were like, this cat sucks. She can't go fast. I'm adding kick. And everyone was like, this is good. Keep it. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's, one, of the, it's one of the best additions. <laughs> she didn't have anything like that in the first game. And it really, okay. uh, it really uh, messed with her, her movement. That's currently so, used to buy items, and there's a couple, there's a couple of important items that we need through this run to mostly increase your damage against bosses, shoot. right? And also yes. uh, start levels of the bike, which is a thing you can do now that wasn't in the first game. Yeah. Yep. Now we can have the bike. The bike makes you go faster. When you press the guard button on the bike, that's the sort of blue flash that appears. You boost on the bike, and that increases you to top speed very quickly. So with the bike. Carol is very mobile and very, very quick, which is also very sticky. She, like, attaches to every single surface yeah, she taps. I, this is already a bit of a messy Ooh, got me a messy start to this level, but... You got you got through the gap there and got the gold gem. That's all yeah, that matters. That is, like, a one-way street. If you miss that, you don't get a second shot. Yeah. Yep. Um, thankfully, there's a pretty consistent setup for that, and also I have a backup gem I can pick up in Phoenix Highway if I really did miss it, so it's not a huge disaster. Uh, there's one more gem I want to get up here. I was hoping to just launch myself up, but I didn't quite get it. Three gold gems for item. Hopefully, okay. yes. all right. First boss. First boss. Throws the bike straight up because you can use the bike as a bridge out. Got it stuck on them. Got the big damage there straight away, taking off the first phase before it's even landed. Casually, you take the phases out when the boss is landed, but the boxes are overlapped when uh, the boss is in a ball. So ideally, you want to be dealing damage then. I missed it. Yes. Yeah. So Kara has this like throwing disc thing that attempts to track enemies as they fly. But like this boss is very mobile and flies all around the room, and the tracking sometimes doesn't really know what to do with it. Yeah, I, I got, never really figured out a good solution for that. I got the first half, but I didn't get the second half, so that's unfortunate. But pretty fast. And then addition to this game is that actually at the end of the stages, uh, you have to actually collect a star card to trigger the end of the stage. So that is a new mechanic uh, compared to Free on Planet One. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, item, but... item management is a pretty big part of Carol, yes. especially. Menuing um, skills. Yeah, menu menuing the menu boss is real. They've purchased an attack up potion. This means they do more damage, so they kill boss faster, which is good like. Yeah, yeah you can carry yes. up to five potions, and uh, each attack potion actually gives you a 4% uh, percent, uh, more damage. So, well, all five are 20%, which is actually very considerable and helps to meet some damage thresholds, so... 
well, it's really useful and it's the first available potion you can buy uh, for the purposes of the run. So, well, Shilin Park, second level. What are your thoughts about Shilin Park? Who gets through by the train? There's like a cycle on the train there. If you miss it, you, the train will sort of prevent you from dropping down. You got through nice and clean. Yeah, sadly, that train likes to catch me sometimes, but... Yeah, until actually Carol is available to buy, uh, buy the power-up uh, start item. Uh, she has to actually oh. run on foot on most of the early game stages. And this is one of them. There is no bike in Shenling Park, unfortunately. So she's actually very fast on foot too, so... It's just not really that much of a time loss. Probably yeah, think... on Planet 1, she was a lot more dependent of the bike than she is now. Yeah, I remember picking up a... Bravestone here, technically optional, but it's really helpful for a couple, yes. of, a couple of things later, so um, somebody wants Brave to know that no, Bravestones are items that uh, give you quote-unquote negative effects, but this one uh, has, an, un, has a positive effect when combined with a different item we will get later, so... Yeah, in the case of uh, Bravestones in particular, usually they give you some penalty, but uh, also some reward about multiplying your gems uh, through the stage. Uh, when we mention the gems uh, we can collect uh, to get the currency for buying items, actually there are crystals and there are cores you can get from uh, defeating enemies, and all of them can be exchanged for more gems. So there is also that uh, bright side from using Bravestones. In particular, Nostox is one that makes you start with no lives. Like uh, you can see at the top that Carol has two lives left. Well, you start with zero, but there is another item that synchronizes very well with that. Third attempt was not uh, worth that, but whatever, I wanted to get it anyway. <laughs> You're not even really supposed to get up that way, but we'll allow it. It's yeah. It's, if you get it the first try, it's definitely faster than doing that section normally. But I missed it. That used to, that used to be easier, but the geometry changed to make yep. it harder. So this class Ooh. likes to jump off the screen, and obviously you can't hit them there. Uh, wow, the that, disc is just not like cooperating. Mostly. Yeah, it has a pattern, and if you actually restart what? the stage, uh, you get a different pattern. God, I cannot that believe that it's that much. This lock on. At least you didn't get the soft lock. Is, is that sort of thing? Did they patch it? It's very particular about the direction. Uh, I think it, it, it is fixed. Uh, yeah, no need to say the game is still very fresh, so still getting some updates and bug fixing. But a uh, really nice job from development team so far at this moment. And actually, they're hearing a lot of our feedback, so. We're really glad about that. Uh, big yeah, shout out actually, to the Galaxy Trail team. Yeah, they actually released a beta patch today, which is actually the patch I'm playing on. I was a little bit nervous that uh, it was going to break things, but uh, I did a full run earlier and it seems good, so we'll see. Yeah, it's like everything you work with technology. It's like, you never know if it's Oops. fully okay until you test it. So. Uh, it's uh, just normal business. Still, everything seems very fine. So this is Phoenix Highway. Actually, there is something important about this section. Uh, in the map, probably you saw that uh, the path actually was split in three sections. You had uh, three different chapters. You can play them in any order. Actually, in Adventure Mode, that is uh, the first way you play the game, this classic mode, a uh, simplified version with less cutscenes and, and hubs and all the things, elements uh, more like RPG-like this game has. Uh, classic mode is a lot more compact. So back to the stories. In adventure mode, actually, once you enter a chapter, you have to finish the entire chapter to move on. But in classic mode, actually, you can do all the stages of the section in any order. So that's actually some really cool feature about this. And now... It's because it was just easier to implement. Yeah. That and, uh... <laughs> it, was, it was easier to do. So there is the we gem there. Do we actually take advantage of that in this run? Nice. Or... I'm glad I got that. Really? Yeah, do, 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 is, do we take advantage of the fact you can do runs in like a non-linear right. order in Classic? Um, it matters. Is that, is that like part it of the It depends the menu, in, 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 actually. Yeah, uh, maybe in the item sets. The way the menuing works is you have to back all the way out of an episode to select a different episode. So I think that it wouldn't save any time. Yeah, I think that that is the varies from run to runner. In my case, actually, I prefer to play um, all the levels with certain item sets so I don't have to be switching items. So... That's what I do. I mean, if I do a specific um, item set for two or three levels in different chapters, probably it's better going for those instead of more menuing. 
So, well, this, this is, is his Discord, Discord, the train boss. The train boss, yes, has drills. Actually, it was intended mechanic that the drills uh, has on the front actually were the only way to actually hit. <laughs> but now we can actually yep. do damage with normal attacks. So, yeah, that good got thing. changed because that took ages. That was just slow. Yeah, I mean, not exactly really slow. Uh, I think the actual fast strat is actually using them, but they are really complicated. So, yeah. yeah. Good call, actually, making possible to hit with normal attacks. So now we have Zaoland. Zaoland is another very short level. Uh, all this with the kind of um, park theme with a lot of balloons and rails. Uh, actually, this is the first uh, level with rails. I know UA actually loves uh, rails so much. I actually do. Uh, not mind the rails as much as I used to, but there's definitely it, it's definitely the it feels like the uh, the least forgiving part of uh, this run in a couple of stages. Yeah, in particular in the late, in the late game, there are many levels with many rails that are actually really complicated uh, to travel on. So, but at least here there are not really much. Uh, so the rails can be actually very fast, but. Uh, I guess they're not really as fast for Carol. Ooh, oh, that was a really nice uh, baseball. That's a lot harder to find it, it looks. Yes, yes, you have to actually get a good angle and time to jump, and it's a really precise baseball. Yeah, launch. it knows about part because the baseball itself is a timing thing instead of a precision thing. So now get to the last baseball section. That baseball is slow, it's okay. Uh, I'm climbing up and finding the boss. Do you like jump, to the jump scares? Because this was actually his oh. uh, specialist on this. Just missed the loot skip a lot. <laughs> yeah. I so, think he was better for that, but I still missed it. This big guy that actually throws uh, baseballs is our enemy now. Has some kind of big hitbox. Uh, good brawler combos are actually effective. And now the boss is dead. Very quick. Except not. Except not. Now it's split into three. So you have to fight them, uh, three of them. So yeah, <laughs> this is a, a very fun moment when you play the game for the first time. So when those baseballs are thrown and they explode, they actually have like friendly fire. Like the boss can hurt themselves. Yes. And uh, also also oh, actually, that was an anything. amazing fight. I, I, mm, I, I, it's all right. <laughs> That was an amazing boss <laughs> fight. That was alright. Right. If my, if pretty my fast economy can right. say it's amazing, I'll, 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 I'll allow it. He'll allow it. So now the Battle Sphere deck. Actually, Battle Sphere is uh, while UA is actually buying another potion, uh, Accelerator, which gives you more speed on flat ground. Uh, the Battle Sphere is a segment with different uh, mini uh, levels inside. One of them, uh, there are four in the main story. There are more uh, if you actually uh, get the true ending route, but most of them are just races or fights, depending on, on which segment. The first one, the Beginner's Gauntlet, is just uh, some funny platforming in well, this section that is like a uh, very, I don't know, crowded place. So actually, very cool. There you have many routes you can take. Mm. Can't uh, that, that, that's the wrong direction. <laughs> that was quite yeah. the noise. I probably could have recovered that, but I genuinely haven't done that in a very long time. <laughs> yeah, good thing actually, Carol is like very fast to recover everywhere, so. And that was the beginning of Scanlet. So now we have some fights. The first one is uh, fighting robots. So actually, there is not much more than that. So I guess this is, might be a good time for donations. Yeah, donations is donations now. <laughs> Perfect, absolutely. We, I just want to quickly say that we actually reached $1,500,000 raised nice. for Prevent Cancer Foundation. Uh, we we also have a $1,000 donation from Peter Aristad that says, Go Ben, go. Hot Pepsi is the drink of Weed Cat Champions. Oh, that's right. Food crimes was a thing, wasn't it? <laughs> We also have a $10 donation from LLK that says, I've been following Uranium Anchor's Freedom Planet runs since his first Carol run in Freedom Planet 1. We watched his Blaster Master runs before then. Basically, if it's a game where you constantly mount and dismount vehicles, he'll run it. 
Come on, everyone. You don't want to miss UA competing this tough as nails bonus stage. Let's get this Freedom Planet 2 incentive met. That was actually pretty good. That stage is yeah, really Yeah, it was really good. 55 <laughs> seconds is very fast. Right, now you get to beat your friends up. This was very fun. Uh, yeah. bigger Lilac on in particular. Uh, the enemy... Oh, get back here. <laughs> the enemy AI in this level is completely random. It so does. So it takes 20 seconds or 40 seconds. Yeah. Yes. Or 11 seconds, actually, I got the other day. That was uh, incredible. <laughs> I don't know how what? I did that. Yeah, I got the 11 seconds with Nero. Okay. Uh, the thing right. with 11 seconds is even possible on this. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, this is a reset point for me. I'm, I'll be happy if I don't die. Yeah, it's not, very, yeah. I find this stage very easy to die on. Like, it's, it's liberating watching uh, you struggle with this as well, because even during Kekki, oh. I was like, it's really it, easy to die Mila, on this level, but it's really go. short, so we kind of just left what it. Mila, it's actually super <laughs> thug. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, there's an optional... I'm sorry, super thug, uh, but this is a carol run. <laughs> dojo elsewhere in the game, where you fight these characters one-on-one. -on -one. What else did you expect would happen when you shove three bosses into a single arena? <laughs> Dominates the neutral. Mila uh, is usually not the sticking point on that stage. Good God. She's got the least health. Usually uh, she gets killed by one of the others. This is the last uh, arena challenge for now. It's a yes. five lap race with the owner of the arena. Uh, not the owner. The not, champion of the arena, uh, yes. Uh, the Captain Kalal. That actually is the champion of the Battle Sphere, and uh, he's challenging you uh, to a uh, Actually, to a race in this case, but actually the original plan was having uh, different uh, kind of challenges. Hopefully, um, I mean, hopefully not. Fortunately, it's the worst. Uh, they decided the race that is actually uh, five laps on on this circuit, but actually uh, we might say uh, that you mean, there are you mean four laps, right? Four laps, and then <laughs> just this. <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah, I love this. <laughs> I love this. So, yeah, wow. that was the battle sphere. Yep. QA so got... really missed that one. Yeah, but yeah, how did that happen? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is, this is the only run where you're allowed to make that joke, because it's me. It's my... Ah! The battle sphere anyway. becomes the center of many interesting places for uh, the future runner, specifically because you have uh, the possibility of actually uh, fighting every boss you fought on the on the game, every boss you already defeated in the main story, then you can refight again in Battle 2, so it's really good for practice. So now we're getting the middle route, that is Avian yeah, that, Museum. That Spire Takedown used to be a lot harder because uh, uh, a patch changed it. You used to have to mash for Carol's standing attack, the standard claw thing. Uh, and now you can just hold the button and she'll do it automatically. Oh yeah, that was something uh, that, that used adding. to be so much harder because you had to actually hit, hit the button at the right time to hit those little knobs on the web. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That in particular. Yeah. So that that's a good point. Yeah, actually, they they added auto fire to Carol's attacks recently, and there's a lot of places where it really helps. But it also messes with my muscle memory in some cases because I'm still I did the majority of my runs before that patch happens. So you might see me do some silly things sometimes. <laughs> Oh, that's fine. That Actually, jump is a lot more difficult than it looks. Coming that high speed the... off that stairs. Too early or too late, you could jump at the wrong angle because you're on a slope. So, well, this, uh, the spiders, uh, you beat all the hitboxes there and the spider just falls. You can also fight the spider, but depending on the conditions, you might actually prefer to just kill the arse instead. Uh, Eaten by box! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Punchy, Punchy had a funny name for for that in particular that I'm not going to repeat here. Uh, the, first, <laughs> the, the, the first game had these disappearing and disappearing boxes, and uh, if you're standing inside them, you could glitch into walls and, well, you know, glitching into walls is bad, so now if you're standing inside them, that happens. Yeah, they eat you. Oh, you, hey, this you, is you, you did take off, off two first. phases really fast, though. Yeah, this, this fight is, like, is also kind of dangerous because... Yeah, well, so Ele Element Burst is like an item he's got a clip that adds like a poison effect to his attacks. This boss for some reason repeats their transition to the last phase over and over again when they're poisoned. Yeah. I don't know why. Until the, until I the poison know. is actually out. 
Yeah, if you time it right, you can avoid that, um, or you can just not equip Element Burst, but uh, it's not worth the menu in time, so I was hoping I could get it timed right, but I didn't quite get yeah, it. Yeah, in my case, actually, what I do is just create a new set with all Element Burst, but, well, uh, it might it's... be more or less convenient depending on the situation. I run another character just in case, so. Yeah, it's, it, it, I, I, it takes about five seconds to, like, set up an item set and swap it around, so I think, and it loses about 10 seconds to get that, so I feel like messing with the item sets twice is basically a wash. Yeah, it depends on actually... Uh, that happens when element burst is actually what is taking the phase and depends on how much left of the effect actually has on the boss. So well, now yeah. we are in Nersh right. Chihuahua, uh, actually a very high level. Uh, gonna not tell right now why, but you're gonna figure out later. Uh, this is a level that is in airship, reminds me a lot of Sky Battalion in Freedom Planet 1. Uh, very cool uh, aesthetics overall. And you have these blocks that have a funny mechanic that you just uh, hit them and when they enter the wall uh, to open it. And for Carol, they're actually incredibly fast by just uh, using the, lo the down kick. The low kick, the one that is uh, giving her speed. Because as more speed you have, uh, higher the travel. The yeah, momentum I, that you that impart point. on a block like that depends on the player speed, I think. I think. Yes. I obviously didn't program the game. Yes. That's, that's, job. that's why. That's why the jump kick like imparts a huge amount of momentum on them because the jump kick speeds you up like very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, nothing to do with the power of the attack. It's purely based on your horizontal speed when you hit the thing. But the yes. low kick gives it's, you it's, max. It's it's kind of a quirk that it goes that far because it's the initial impulse that gets carried. Strictly speaking, I don't think it's supposed to do that, but it feels good, so it feels good. let yeah. it rock. So uh, that was we also just boss. Saw a, a mid boss there. Yeah, that was yeah, Lancer. It... You only uh, take down two phases of Lancer that has six phases. Actually, uh, for reasons, uh, six phases is only for Carol. For the other characters, Lancer only has four. Um, so yeah, you take the first they two have to now. Fight an additional boss at the end of the stage. And yes, you Chaos have a... Chaos gives the boss because plot. Yes, because plot, exactly. So you take the first two phases and you have to finish the fight afterwards. So now we are actually reaching the second encounter with Lancer. So four more phases, that's gonna be rogue. Nice, go both in one kick. Right, I find this very difficult, usually. It is. And I have no idea how, the, how this works, it's black magic. You're supposed to fight the boss. I, I was saying I found the boss difficult. I forgot that from him. You don't actually do it in the run. <laughs> I just no, break clean, direct to the win. Once I Big actually got there. in it, I got it first try, so I'll take it. <laughs> Definitely. Nice job there. So actually what happens there is that Fair Carol enough. uses the disc toss uh, movement to get height, and then uh, she lingers on the springs while using the up kick movement that gives uh, upwards momentum and tries to just uh, Hold on until Mider is back, so I can throw the disc again. And well, it requires a lot of rhythm, so it's actually a very complicated strat to execute. So yeah, very well done. Very nice. Yeah, I was I was genuinely worried about that, so I will I will take that. <laughs> it made it look easy. I I struggled with that one. Yeah, actually, I did find it. Uh, Carol Rand is probably hated me a bit first, but uh, it's not that bad. And you get used I to struggle, it, I struggle with it especially because it's not something I thought about before the game came out. Hmm. Well, actually, all the characters skip Lancer uh, different ways, but yeah, all of them do. All of them? Okay. I don't remember who discovered the, the Carol skip. Um, one of you happens to remember. I want to make sure they get credit for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually did find it, and then uh, Pencil actually uh, applied it like super quick <laughs> on getting the level like super low. It skips a lot of time. Actually, fighting Lancer takes a lot of time there, so... Oh, uh, that's fantastic. Like, that it's a really big skip. Oh yeah, the gimmick of this level is that you're constantly swapping in and out between the foreground, and I should take the time to explain that. So like when you're in the background in the shadows, you pass yeah. through certain things like these giant spike columns. Yeah. But, uh, this means the level is on something of a cycle. Ouch. Any coincidence with mechanics of other games is just a coincidence. Uh, it's a really a smooth, I really love it. Uh, actually, I love it in particular this part when I play it casually. Then in the speedrun, I actually had my moments with this stage, but now I am peace, except for the boss, of course. But <laughs> I, I, I got nobody, some. Nobody likes Rosebud. 
Nobody they're on cycles and they're on local cycles as well. Like when when they come into camera view, so there's, there's not like there's a limit to how fast you can reasonably do it without yeah. just bypassing the section entirely. I, I don't want to go in there. Better a local cycle than a global one, though. Yeah. So well, now there's this boss, Rosva, that is a very particular boss. Um, you have to fight while switching layers, as you can see. So the, this boss has a lot of orbs you have to destroy and then hit the head three times. But the way this <laughs> boss actually waves and moves is really awkward, so it makes it um, really yeah. to get this fight. Yeah. Movement seems to be our... Is it... Punchy, you don't know, is it based on a player position or is it just pure RNG? It's, you're right, I should know. I regret to inform you, I don't. <laughs> okay. I have absolutely I no idea. Absolutely, I have absolutely... absolutely and absolutely the boss decides no which idea why it does what it does. The, the boss also decides which attack it's going to use based on if well, it was a very good really rose bot, by the way. Also, what <laughs> happened to what happened to the head there? I the first time I see that happening. That's that was your wild. Before. <laughs> you just okay. I launched its head into orbit. That's never happened before. <laughs> I have seen even the There's door opening moment. before, but never have seen that. Nice job. There's our moment. Okay, for those actually uh, having some nostalgia from Freedom Planet 1, this is a, a section they actually would love because Road Graveyard is uh, very similar to Level There, that is uh, Battle Glacier, but also with a lot of remnants of uh, Brevon's army that was the final boss of the... I mean, the antagonist of the first game. So, on the music, it's actually uh, a remake of the Brevon song. So, Road Graveyard is a really nice level, in particular for people that play the first game. But about mechanics in particular, yeah, it's so, a really cool one. And this is, this is my favorite little... around that corner, climbing up the wall. I, lo I love yep. that little, this, this little section with Carol. Known shippable. Uh, every character can do that, but you have to also climb the next wall, so... Yeah, Carol is the only one who can just, like, jump straight up the wall. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that route, that actually doesn't look bad. I assume Nira could probably do something with it, but um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a Nira runner. I've I might, I might love it. Nira. I might love it, yeah. I, I love actually loving Having things, ideas. So. There's still ideas Luke with the right? characters. No. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be doing any of the Oob clips. Uh, oh, okay. the, the layer clip there in particular is uh, really tricky without the bike. With the bike, it's kind of not hard to get. So, uh, just to put some context, layer clipping is something, some glitch of the game that you can actually like uh, get in another layer of the game and ignore entirely the collisions of the main layers. So, you travel through the stage based on that. But you have to, you're falling and, well, you have to actually find land points or try to reach check po checkpoints and restart or different things with that. It's not like just uh, free crossing through the level. Uh, there is one there that is kind of easy to trigger, but if you don't have no horizontal speed and ways to preserve your air momentum, yeah, it might be actually very dangerous. So now this is from the queue, the boss with a lot of HP, but UA did an amazing job actually fighting it. Yeah, that worked really well. That boss can take quite a bit of time if you let it into its uh, more, diff more aggravating phases. Yeah, I'm. I missed a couple of disc throws, but I still got the worst of it. So, or I still, I still avoided the worst of it. I should say. So, oh, uh, uh, back. Uh, uh, audio guy, <laughs> crank the music. Yes, but go ahead. I, I was about to say the same thing. Actually, this... for those loving the nostalgia from Freedom Planet One, this is another one because it's really similar looking to Thermal Base, except for well, the color, uh, the main color palette of the level. But uh, the music is also a remix of the Thermal Base song, which is one of my favorites there. So. Yeah, I really love this one so far. This was also like the tester favorite of the soundtrack. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is easily my favorite Every, song. Everyone favorite loved song it. The whole game. Also, the theme, uh, plot wise, also really uh, bringing back memories since, well, the appearance of some other character related with Brevon's army. The, uh, the. But soldiers? I don't know. Yeah, the troopers actually are from Freedom Planet 1 as well. They, they the aren't as uh, dangerous in this game, though. They only get knocked down once, and I think they don't shoot as often. And some of them use swords instead of guns, so... Yeah. 
Yeah, if you're playing one day, the in house scores. Oh, uh, this is the thing. Uh, uh, oh, that, that is a scout, by the way. That is another character. Now it's helping us uh, to investigate the, the area. Very much. So, well, this level is a lot of back and forth, actually solving the puzzles and uh, opening new sections and finding the switches for them. So, it's a lot of back and forth now, so maybe it's another good time for the nation. For sure, yeah. Awesome. We have a $10 donation here from Yeehaw that says another $10 if someone makes a really funny FP joke or pun at some point during the run. Is there also, a kind of joke? <laughs> uh, it says FP. Oh, FP. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry, I think you said FB. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, we also have a $25 donation from Ray Parker Jr. that says, let me tell you something. Bleepin' makes me feel good. I ain't afraid of no sleep. I ain't afraid of no bed, but I am afraid to miss the Freedom Planet 2 run. Best of luck, bustin', bustin', buh, buh, bustin' your record, UA. Nice, that, that, that. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, we also have a $10 donation from Traylina that says, Carol and Nira, speedrunner here, my messed up body clock is a monkey's paw. I always wanted to submit for a GDQ, but my internet is too poor and don't have enough money to travel to the States. Learning Carol is no longer a miserable pile of broken bikes. Yeah, so that's yeah, somebody, yeah. If somebody wants to explain just how much better the bike is in this game than the first one. Uh, in the first game, you, the bike, uh, first off, you, instead of just getting off the bike by throwing the disc, in, which is what you do in this game, you can get back on it by throwing the disc and then pressing the button to... Uh, in, the in the previous game, first off, uh, the bike wasn't... You were either on the bike, or you left it behind. Yeah, you had and to bounce also, on it and then mount it again. Yeah. And, and also, uh, if you took three hits on the bike, it broke. And yes. you were stuck without it. So yep. playing care was extremely punishing. Yeah, <laughs> you had to be very careful. You think that actually the bike hits were Over. resetting every time you cross the new screen, but still really complicated in some particular spots. And that was yeah, a yeah. really nice boss, by the way. I Fire hate syntax that boss is really freaky. More than anybody else, Rosebud is a close second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're actually doing a nice job at bosses so far today. <laughs> Uh, the problem with this one is that it has three phases, but in the first and the third in particular, uh, the hitboxes are very small. Uh, so it requires we've got another boss to talk about right now, so... Yes, speaking oh, of yeah, nostalgia is... and all characters from Freedom Planet 1, this is the General Surfer team. Uh, that is uh, guarding the place, uh, waiting for Lord Prevon to actually come back. So, very similar movements to Freedom Planet 1, actually. It's also a boss there, and this the pattern is where you really the start seeing the uh, explosion self damage yeah. take place. Yeah, that, when that was pretty uh, uh, missiles, you're standing right in front of him, so they just explode in his face, too. Yeah, it's actually important not to cross like a full health petal boundary while he's readying a rocket because there's like mid phase invulnerability for the bosses as well. And if the explosion goes off while he's in the middle of that, he doesn't get hurt by his own rocket. But if the explosion goes off when they have a sliver of health left in the phase, that explosion will steal deal, deal, deal full damage. So just damage the next phase instead. Also, yeah. third boss. Yeah. Second phase. Yeah. If you like the jump scares. I'm not preparing you for anything. Um, this phase actually has a lot of invulnerability moments. The, there is this uh, ball that actually this fireball deals a lot of damage. And this shooting that is actually what is very good. What's going on with these dip throws? What on earth? Yeah. And Blame now he's Do dead. It. I dare you. Except that he's not dead, actually. A lot of people actually died casually in that last breath. <laughs> I, I, I know I it. I I didn't because I had health, but I was definitely not expecting that to happen. So, well, shopping time! We finally uh, finished the first chapter, so we now unlocked the uh, Global Opera 1, that is the next section. So now there are new items, so UA is The two most important items start. in the game are now available. Those being yes. Power Up Start, which gives us a bike at the start of the stage, obviously it. And uh, Payback Ring, which... Boosts your attack power by a full 20% if you have no stocks. That's why we grabbed that Bravestone back in the second stage, because that gives us zero stocks to start with. We don't have to go die. Yes, basically you start with that, so 
you already have the damage bonus with that, but at the cost of, well, don't die because you're gonna have to continue from checkpoint and you cannot revive. That actually we didn't mention, what? but that is another what? new... <laughs> the hangar just doesn't want to be... <laughs> okay. That we hangar told you. What? Yeah. That is the worst I've had in a very long time. <laughs> I, I, I have a lot of situations like that. I, I, I totally swear on that. Uh, the shit note, the necessity of no socks make, uh, would make uh, some levels, especially late game bosses, very, very intimidating. But uh, you can also buy continues for uh, crystals in this game. Yeah. And easy modes that's set to 50 crystals, which is next to nothing. So we don't have to worry about that for safety. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, actually, you know what, what I was gonna say is that uh, there is a mechanic on this game that uh, you saw earlier, but we didn't explain that is uh, every time to die, having more left, unless you have anything that actually uh, prevents you from that, you can actually revive on the place. And that is actually a very useful uh, mechanic. So, well, if you have no stocks, uh, you cannot do that. So you're gonna have to actually go back from the last check. Running straight Bus into the boss. This one is uh, ah, the best you can do is the upward kicks. spam up, up kicks, which yeah, yeah that's a very generous amount of pistol. Pistol. But also uh, keep you uh, give them invulnerability frames for that period of time. So it's not great for uh, heavy damage, but in situations like this where the boss otherwise isn't vulnerable for much time, a long period of time. It's really our only option. Yeah, this isn't great. But yeah, this boss is actually really complicated. Uh, has different timings every time it goes uh, from the water, so it's yeah. actually really complicated to calculate. I read some people in chat actually talking about the song of Global Brown One. Yeah, it's uh, another of my favorites. Uh, I think it's probably my favorite level in the, in the run. Yeah, um, so by the way, this, this stage in particular, there's still some uh, questions about whether or not it's better to bring the power start or payback ring into this. Um, yeah, payback ring good. makes the phase skip on the boss much more reliable, but um, the bike makes the stage faster, so it's kind of sick. Yeah, there is some flexibility the about routes and item preferences. Only so. content thing matters is that this stage has a six route split at the end, and you have to pick four of them. Yeah, the routing is really important for the stage. So first than anything, uh, everything is dark, so we have to actually turn the lights on. There we yeah, go. Fungers time. Yeah, it's a relatively new game, so the routes aren't like etched in stone tablets yet. We're kind of still figuring out the nitty gritty of some of the item routing. Yeah. Sorry, remember I didn't show. I didn't show up. Don't blink. I missed time. Ah, don't blink. Yeah, that, that is a really fun thread. It's a threat that actually you enter one of the slingshots and then you immediately uh, synchronize with the other so you cancel all the sequence, entering really fast to the other one. It looks really, really cool. Got that at least. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, yeah that's a good. Uh, so I, I, what happens goal. there is you jump above that mirror that you're supposed to enter from below. So you just ride across the ground below the, the, the bottom mirror. Oh, that's why that happened. You shouldn't tell yes. me these things. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, that is really cool, and every character nah, has uh, stuff for that. And also, this uh, restarting, actually, returning to checkpoint is actually faster here. Uh, every time you just uh, plug, uh, uh, put a plug on the ground, uh, in the first frame, you can already, uh, you already trigger the checkpoint flag, so you can safely go back. That it's, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah, it's it's faster both in uh, for ILs and for full game runs because the the level timer is paused while the transition is playing. The the file timer at the end is not, but it still ends up being faster. Yeah, uh, it's more it's even faster for the IL timer, but it's also faster for file timer. Yeah, you, I I am personally responsible for that particular division because there are a lot of strategies in Freedom Planet One that didn't save real time but were sort of built around gaming the in-game timer and yeah. personal philosophy. I don't like that. So there are two it, it's timers fair. in Freedom yeah. Planet Two: one that tracks the uh, <laughs> yeah, there, there are one that's basically real time that. minus loads. But it's fair. It's fair. I, I also are, think that some of them actually became obnoxious at some point. So yeah, there are there are uh, various opinions. There are various philosophies about this, but I'm the one who worked on the game, so ha-hi-dee-ha. 
So yeah, because actually the, this game has uh, two different timers at the end, the file timer and the stages timer, and we are using the file timer. So uh, The yeah. reason we use file timer is because the stage timer doesn't include the Bowser stages. So we yeah. oh, yeah. kind of yeah. are stuck between a rock and a hard place there. That was because it was difficult to account for. The funny skip, hopefully. Okay. Why not have three timers? Oh yeah, I love this one. This is another oh, one we're going to try and clip through. Nice. <laughs> Uh, also, yeah. for it works for every character. Yeah, you have to you have to hit guard right as the laser's hitting you, and it forces you into the wall, and then you zip through. I ain't even mad about that one. I didn't even come close to thinking about. <laughs> okay, after all this climb with all the teleporters, finally the boss, uh, Beast Two. Beast Two is just uh, it's a boss that flies, uh, rushes, and you can actually damage when he's uh, coming, and then. Uh, after a couple of rushes, it's actually landing here, and yep. you can fight for some reason, here. Some, yeah, for some reason, some of the rushes you can't damage him on, and I'm still not entirely sure why. It's always consistent. Yeah, because there are a few he still has high damage. frames from the previous phase. Oh, okay. That oh, cool. yeah. that makes actually sense, because I, uh, the boss is actually living way too fast <laughs> from the screen, so yeah. Come on, get back here. So, so this one's invincible, but the next one. two aren't, because the iframes yeah. have worn off by then. Yeah, also, there are a lot of different uh, battle songs for uh, different bosses. Yeah, the soundtrack in this game is phenomenal, by the way. I don't know if yeah, I... Uh, it is. I don't know. Yes. This clock on why? And there you go. So now we mentioned the Payback Ring and Nostox combination. It's time to actually put a uh, use for it. So we have Auditorium that is uh, like Snowfields, a completely boss fight stage, and uh, we're gonna use uh, our strongest attack combination for it. Hopefully I can get the phase skip. I was kind of inconsistent with it in practice earlier, so let's see. Hopefully. No so lies. happy three. This boss oh. just kind of jumps back and forth, and it's mostly just attacking the boss whenever you have the opportunity. Yeah, it is a fixed pattern, so the good thing is that it's uh, very predictable and you can actually build a strat and it's gonna be consistent since it's always the same pattern. Uh, there you go, that is the first part. Slow, slow phase skip, but I still got the phase skip, but that's not the phase skip I was Bungie, worried about. These past three bosses have been very similar to one another. So, so for the story, that was the Captain Kalau, and now uh, all the robots we fought in the last three stages are combined in the BFF 2000. That is this robot, this giant robot with a uh, sword and lasers. Uh, the giant rabbit. The head. It's a giant rabbit, just because the artist. It's just a giant likes rabbit, yeah. Kind of thing. So this is a, has a lot of this is going cool really well so far. I yeah, I'm enjoying the art. Oh, that sucks. That, 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 that is there. There was uh, one health maybe. for that bar. Yeah, maybe, I'm not gonna get maybe, it. cycle skip? I'm not, I'm not gonna get it. Uh, <laughs> so sad. Uh, okay. So this oh, this is a fun, this is fun, Dev Insight. These are supposed to do damage. They don't. That wasn't <laughs> implemented. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, actually, all this was just to showcase that. Yeah, the holograms, like, they look like they do damage. They're meant to. It missed, it, it slipped the net, all right? <laughs> Even now, I totally still dodge those. They do hurt you in the Battle Sphere fight, though, which is really weird. Do they? Yeah. Really? Huh. Yes. <laughs> Wait, it only works in one of them? Okay, that's news to me. So, we have one of my favorite levels, but for the wrong reasons. Uh, we have Palace Berger, that is a level uh, you have to traverse while coming back to the Royal Palace of Shang 2. Uh, Plot-wise, uh, basically, at, while you were wasting your time doing the other characters... Uh, Invasion! Well, yeah, basically, Merga, uh, the antagonist, was actually taking the palace. So, well, you have to hurry and kick her out, but you won't be able to do that. So, <laughs> on this level, the strategy is very much uh, managing your health. Um, Nostox is actually a very useful item for this. But when I say it's my favorite for the wrong reasons, it's because I use a very particular item for this level. <laughs> that is the most optimal, but it's uh, really complicated to use, and it's uh, one hit KO. And it's an item that literally you die at every hit. So for that, you have to route actually 
uh, a couple deaths, uh, trying to minimize the time loss, and then just save a lot of time by. Yeah, well, exactly. This boss is really hard to one cycle, but it yeah. is fairly possible. I think I personally got it like once. Help is scaring me. I know you're doing it on purpose, but this scares me. Uh, I, I mean, this yeah. is scaring me too. Oh, okay. No. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, you're fine. <laughs> uh, Are you fine? Can Just actually, with I, I this warping into the flames, that that was dangerous, actually. It really okay. was. The only reason I did that is because I knew he was okay. Oh, yeah, that car is the only, the only weak spot left. <laughs> okay. And you still die on the way to the next boss. Oh, no. So, Wait, well, here we down. are. Actually, if you die before that, just keep a cutscene. I mean, just keep the uh, sequence The boss of is supposed to be one of those boss fights that you're not supposed to win. Yeah. So, normally what happens is you go into that boss fight, you burn all your lives in the boss fight, and then the stage ends. But if you have nothing going into the boss fight, the stage just ends there. Yeah, yeah you can, you can launch your piece. corpse. You yeah, can launch your corpse your into the boss fight and save time. Uh, and this is a pretty relaxed stage, and this would be a great time yeah. for animations. Also very, fun, very fast. Perfect. I do want to mention that we are still about $2,000 away from our incentive that we do need to meet before the end of this run. So let's keep those donations rolling in so we can meet that for sure. You're definitely going to want to see it. We have a $10 donation from a chocolate orange that says, Hey, UA, it's been great working with you in the studio this week, and it's been great watching your run here too. In fact, I think I'd love to watch more of it. Maybe a <laughs> secret stage if you have one. Also, shout out to my good friend Revo on the comms. Ah, oh, I love that guy. Yeah, so uh, I've been running audio tech shifts in the studio all week, and uh, Chocolate Orange or Chocolate Orange has been the producer I've been working with. Uh, this was originally my shift, uh, but as soon as they put this on the schedule, I had to swap with somebody. So shout outs to Mark for swapping with me. Uh, I really appreciate being able to run the finale instead. So thanks. We have a $300 donation from Jeff that reads, Ben, these past six years have made, or sorry, have made proud to call you my friend. You're putting in incredible work both in speedrunning and behind the scenes at GDQ. It's a shame that we couldn't do a group meetup this year for AGDQ, but there's always next time. Best of luck on the run and much love from all your guild friends in Grass Guild. Grass Guild Friends Guild. And we also have a $50 donation from Mike that says, It has been a trip watching you grind this out on your stream to now seeing you present this on the big stage. We're proud of you, Ben, and all the work you do for GDQ and the speedrunning community. Let's see this incentive get met. From your buddy, Smooth Mike. <laughs> we also have a $15 donation from TR Bucket that says, Yo, Freedom Planet 2 speedrun at this hour? Awesome. Best of luck. Uh, so fun yeah. fact I just want to mention before we keep going. Uh, your speed and your movement speed affects your attack speed. So I'm able to just, it makes this boss a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Also, that's, Whoa. that, that, that is a classic. <laughs> that, that is actually a classic. I always miss that star card. You were so fast and you always just pass through it. Yeah, that's always Under been a mechanic it. as early as the first game, where the faster you're moving, the faster your attacks come out. Here we get a collectible. Be moving quickly. We will get no more collectibles for the rest of this run. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the collectible that unlocks you, that gets you the uh, true ending, in if you yeah. do the arena the arena challenges. But again, we're not doing those, so that's the only one we'll be seeing. Yeah, we're going to be skipping those. To be honest, I have done those arena challenges exactly one time to unlock <laughs> the final stage on, or the secret stage on my main save or my main adventure save. So, uh, yeah, that would have been interesting to try it's, to It's going to be a box of surprises. Though. It's going to be fun. I mean, very good content if you donate. It's good content, but it's, it takes like 25 minutes. <laughs> very good content. That is the... Uh, this stage has a lot more fighting and a lot less platforming than your usual platforming stage. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's three... And after that initial segment, there's basically three arenas you have to clear before moving on to the boss. Scattered around the area. It's, it's a bit of a... I, I hesitate to say open world, but it sort of gives off that vibe a little bit. So we just yeah, see most of it and go straight to the arenas. It's not linear. You, you can complete them in any order you like, and they kind of yeah. all loop around in a circle. 
The first time I did this stage, I legit like, just blew past this first one and spent 15 minutes looking for it. <laughs> uh, Jordan, not the only person. <laughs> Why are you guys like this? It goes in a circle, it's fine. Ah, uh, it's fine. It's a, it's a stage that... whatever. Anyway, yes, those are those are weather face enemies. They all correspond to like different elemental attacks. There is like a whole elemental typing system in this game that comes up in very obscure scenarios. Like certain attacks can be blocked with the right kind of shield, but I don't think Yuei's actually picked up a shield at all so far this run. Uh, it, it's gonna be one later on the stage. You know what? I think you might be right. I'm not there sure. There is one happen. stage where that's actually very, very important, but it doesn't come yes. so much later in the run. So. True. True. Yeah, because actually you have uh, the metal charm item. Oh. Damn, I, I say the which one. Well, Rebel you have different spoiler. element sh uh, charms you can uh, actually buy, and uh, those items actually make you start with that shield and also transform every other shield in that type of shield in the stage. So, for example, Metal Charm, for no reason at all, uh, can just start with the Metal Shield and also turns every other shield into Metal Shield. Oh, you really skip that shield. Okay, you don't want the shield. Uh, no shields. <laughs> There's no particular reason he doesn't want shield, it's just jumping over it's faster. Oops. If you hit it, you Oop. can put in hit stun for just a split second. So. Thankfully that catches you now. <laughs> it used to be a soft lock if you missed that. It was pointed in the wrong direction. It was always meant to push you upwards, it was pointed Wait. downwards. Whoops. That was one of the first things that got fixed after release, thankfully. <laughs> And I can't wait to speak around this game, and yet about 50% of the stuff you're talking about is completely new to me. I mean, I'll work on it, don't worry about it. So, well, now the last of these mini bosses is the Pillars, so now it's time to actually fight the boss of this stage, that is uh, Captain Kalo himself. The guy we raised earlier, except now he's out for blood. Yeah, as it turns out, Captain Claw is the traitor. Yes. Oh, actually, we have seen. If you pay a lot of attention when fighting Nemetari, oh, you yeah. will see him actually popping off of the road. Murdered him really fast. Yeah, that was a really good Except he's not dead. <laughs> Phase 2. Well, this one is based on number of hits rather than damage, but the health yes. bar kind of tries to disguise that. But that is how the fight works. Yes. Which means Element Burst interacts with this kind of funny, so every time he tags uh, Kalor in like a couple takes, it will then deal another like half pedal of damage. I'm not doing great at this, but it's not. Yeah, this fight is either. actually so really This fight can be because, uh... hectic if you don't get it done quickly because yeah, uh, okay. it's very fast and tends to move around the arena very erratic. Actually, very, very good recovery at the end. Uh, yeah, also, there are those fans, and well, everything is super floaty, so it's really hard to move there. Yeah, you can't fall off during that boss fight. There's like a constant gust of air coming up off the bottom. This stage is a lot of people's. It wasn't expected to become a favorite, but it's a lot of people's favorite, I think. Right? Honestly, I it was it one of well. the last ones I actually put some effort on, but actually it is fine, yeah. It is a very vertical level, but also a very cycle-based level, because you have those puzzles that you have to actually enter in that uh, spot to actually conduct the electricity sparks. And you can also interact with other objects to take that place, so you have my own experience the there, local cycles, but still. Yeah. Yeah. So we have yeah. many cycles here. This is a very like puzzle heavy level and most of the puzzle heavy levels in this stage were designed by one uh, Will, who has actually been on the GDQ stream before. He was my co-com for the Bad Riz U run. It's all just people who've been associated with GDQ at some point worked on this game apparently. Yeah, what's all just, really nice all just how it goes. Uh, I joked that every time I uh, I played a puzzle level in testing and was like, this stinks of William. It's his handiwork. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I like it. Uh, I think uh, a really nice job on this. It's yeah. important for pacing. I, I, I just think it's funny that all the puzzle really levels are, are primarily the same designer. Ahead. Before we get too far ahead, I do want to mention that uh, those two balls there that I just knocked into the, the sockets, people have been trying to figure out for, m for months now if there's somebody going <laughs> yeah. to the mounds. Uh, we haven't found one yet. Nope. By the way, those doors can actually squish you, so 
I'm, I'm impressed of, of all the things that like I didn't catch before the game came out, where you guys have been clipping out of bounds and doing all sorts of things. That, like <laughs> the, the the weird ball thing was like super janky in testing all the time, but it's the one thing that hasn't given yet. And I'm just like I'm, I'm actually I I don't have the weirdly Nira, weirdly proud of that one. <laughs> I have a very small skip when Nira actually clipped through the door uh, with you, all of them. You, you broke everything else, but I have two balls! I can't say that on this <laughs> You didn't think about that before you said it, did you? <laughs> no! <laughs> Just uh, quickly butting okay. in here, we have uh, 1,060... Wow. Or, sorry, 1,000... Wow. Yes, 1,060... $1,160, my goodness, to go before we can uh, get that incentive. So keep those oh. donations coming in. Very close. Cool. Oh. Coming in fast. Yeah. We've still got, like, about half a run left, I think. Yeah. So uh, a little bit more, I think, something like 40 minutes left. If I had a talk in front of me, I can tell you, but I don't, so. <laughs> uh, you are 53 minutes. Yeah, uh, so, yep, about 40 minutes then. So, well, that is another spider, same as Navian Museum. You can kill the orbs or just kill the spider. Uh, it seems very convenient for Carol to actually kill the orbs since, well, she uh, attacks very fast while glowing, while falling. So, now. This stage is where the bike really shines because you can just drive straight up the wall instead of having to actually platform. Yeah, yep. but the spark has to get here. Yeah, this it is going to get hit. There it is. Okay, good. I was what we've had. We, there were a lot of issues with that one despawning. If you like got out of its range, and then it would just break. So now boss time. Actually, this boss <laughs> is a uh, really fun time, but at the same time, it's really hard to fight because the hitbox of the head that is the only place you can hit. Well, not exactly the only place. Uh, I learned a couple days ago that you can actually use special attacks on the belly, but uh, the head is really small hitbox, and you're also fighting on rails. So it's this, and the the way uh, this boss is actually waving the head is actually very complicated to hit. Not how the matters is that since the arena is belly? moving, you move very quote unquote slowly on the ground. It's a it's a it's consistent with all boss arenas that move, but it's particularly a problem with this one because the boss is so agile. People asking in chat if Bunchy is one of the devs. Uh, yes. I, I worked on this game as a core testing staff for about three years. All right, this is my favorite stage, and once yeah, the music kicks in, my once the music kicks in, it's my second favorite song. Well, this level actually gets Carol uh, shining like. Oh, really, really much, actually. It's like wow. uh, a very long level, but Carol actually makes it like super short. Yeah, this it's level incredible. is. Uh, Lightning Tower was a puzzle level. This level is. Very a puzzle level, but we're playing yes. as Carol, so we just go over half the puzzles. Yeah, I'm gonna be playing maybe about it, maybe slightly less than half of this stage normally. Extremely Actually, a Actually, every character level. is skipping all the uh, the same puzzles, but Carol is particularly fast for that because of the way she does it. It's amazingly fast. And yeah, this was actually the first uh, level that I set uh, an IL world record, and I don't currently have it, but I am planning on trying to take it back once I get back from GDQ. Uh, this one we're not doing anything special in, because it's... Yeah, this, one, this one's it, it, It'll come later, there. trust me. Yeah, on this one you have to actually do the puzzle, but still very fast traveling through it, so... It's wait, not wait. really stopping your own. You get the long drops through this without hitting any of the yeah, blocks on the way th down. That last one in particular yeah. is very difficult to weave through without touching any of the blocks and popping your inventory. Yeah, the second fall is a lot harder than the first one. You can't see it. I'm sure. pulling the face of approval. Like, I'm impressed. Because <laughs> I've never gotten that right, I think, once. Okay, so this, uh, this one's going to be puzzle. this one's gonna be pretty heavily skipped, assuming I do it right. So, yep, normally uh, you're supposed yeah. to get key fish and put them into plants and they create platforms for you. However, Carol, if you bump into these funny walls sort of like backwards, you can just ride up them. They're supposed to bounce you off. They're not supposed to do that, but they do, in fact, do that. Okay, that was really clean. That is super fun. It's like, earlier, Punchy mentioned that the bike is super sticky and it sticks to just everything, even when you don't want it to. It's so sticky, it sticks to stuff that literally is the opposite of sticky. Yeah, you're not supposed to be able to do it for that one. 
And I swear it was really hard, but like as soon as like you guys found that, it suddenly became very easy for me to do it, and I was like, but like I, I... <sighs> oh well. <laughs> Moving on with my life. If it makes you feel any better, I'm pretty sure uh, Frog Moss's video of this level was where I even learned that that was possible. <laughs> so, I had no idea how it worked for like a week of playing this level. I just didn't know why it happened. I just knew it did. And even now, I'm still kind of hazy on the details. Also, that fish stole the fish. <laughs> not, not the lock is uh, an an uber troll. <laughs> And not and not just not just uh, like thematically the boss fight is, can be really annoying. <laughs> yeah, and also Lock is also voiced by the game's primary developer. Yeah, not sure about for Carol, but the boss fight uh, for the other characters, at least for Nira and Mila, oh. as far as I know, has some face skip that is really complicated to get. Uh, a lot of conditions have to be met for that. Uh, yeah. it's not just, it's not like the health conditions have to be met. It's just, you have to deal a lot of damage in a very short period of time. But in order yes. for that to be possible, the conditions have to be met. And, uh, uh, I don't think Carol is actually capable of dealing that quite so much damage in, bur in burst. I have seen a couple of attempts that make me think it is possible, but really hard. But consider also that Carol is actually using a full speed set, uh, item set here. Probably she will definitely, uh, be capable with attack items, but it's not worth it. Uh, Accelerator actually is a potion that gives you a very uh, huge bonus on your ground speed, especially when you're on the bike. What is it, so, 25%? 25%. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I think it was uh, that, that percentage. Uh, so it's definitely significantly less noticeable when you aren't on the bike, which is why we didn't really borrow with it until more recently, when we have bike start, but... That was really that good. Was a really really that was a really good fight. fight, yes. And the that boss, if that boss goes wrong, it really goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of variables to consider, like the moving floor and where they're going to spawn from. Sometimes they'll just spawn over lava, and it's like, there's not... It's hard to deal with that situation. <laughs> yeah. That was very fun. That is a stage that takes a lot of people, like, over 30 minutes to finish on their casual. It's quite long. Uh, I think that's better. I think time. that was better than my old PB. And now it's time to my favorite stage. My mustache is another level where Carol actually shines a lot. Yeah, if this goes well, it goes really well and it looks really cool. So hopefully it'll go really well. We'll see. I love to see it. Yeah, mostly because Carol with uh, the bonus uh, we were mentioning before with Accelerator oh. actually rides the walls like all the whole stage. Oh, like this. I see. <laughs> yeah, it's like skipping very much every single section by just riding walls. That's this is more cool. difficult than it looks. Some of these corners just are random. Yeah, some of the much. corners are are complicated. Yeah, I got a smile on my face about that one. That looks great. Now the fire shield that is actually very useful for the next section. <laughs> the next section is actually a skip that I think every character yeah. does, but well, for Carol it's like yeah, okay, super evil. Cool <laughs> uh, that tunnel well, shows the every speedrunner at least once. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. All right. Completely. Going up top. Yes, this is the route that uh, every character uses. But yep. why can Mark you get up so here? Fast. Answer, you're not meant to. Wait, this what? is here. But there's a wall right there you can cling on to. What do you mean? Just right right actually, there. if you it's... are not meant to, then why there are crystals? And there's the crystals up there, but like the whole Who thing is, is supposed sort of to get up here if not Carol. Actually, it's very funny kind of when you see the full map of this stage, uh, where are located the crystals, because there are uh, crystals like in every single corner of the stage. Like, if you go back uh, until the very okay, first wall of the game, there is a crystal in the top. I say, I say at, not at supposed to. It's not like it's like a glitch that you can get up there, but it's like quite clearly not part of the normal flow. You have, well, to, go, you have, to, you have to go quite out of your way to get up there. It's not what the games uh, originally suggest, maybe, but uh, yes, it's, it's not, you can say it's it's If you don't mind the question, Punchy, who is supposed to get up there? Because clearly someone is. I don't recall exactly. I'm not, for what it's worth, I'm not like the level designer. I'm that's also that's not a fair. mind reader either. So now uh, we have this uh, boss this is cycle based, and it's basically an hour scroller, so now will be a good time for donations, I think. Yep. Definitely. Sure. Perfect. We have a $50 donation from Selene that reads, Sending more support from Primal Bullies. 
Good luck with the run. And again, we're still we're still not that far away from the incentive, so keep those donations coming in. And speaking of the incentive, we have a $100 donation from Sly that says, Let's meet that weapon's core incentive. It's syntax smashy slashy time. We also have a $500 anonymous donation. We goons stand behind you, Uranium Anchor. As always, go UA! And okay. we have... Oops, sorry. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> we have well, a 25... I'm die. <laughs> Boss does not usually live this long. Okay, I, I, I can recover this. I'm just, like, not used to fighting this space. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. We have a $75 donation from Tanya that reads, Years ago, the original Freedom Planet inspired me to get into game development. And today I'm grateful to be able to donate to such a great cause. And as, as a successful game dev during the amazing sequel to that game, Carol is the best and I'm excited to see her crush this game. Okay, so normally the moment you finish this boss, you have to wait for the lava to rise. But we're playing Carol, so we just built the wall. Actually, you can do that with me a lot later. Neat. Uh, previous versions, you just ignored the boss entirely because there wasn't an invisible ceiling. Alright, here, here's, a, here's a scary point. Yeah, a very scary oh. boss fight. Yeah, that's actually it's a really complicated one. A uh, very high risk to lie. Don't and we don't have revives. Though. Yeah, once again, they equip the uh, the no lives bravestone in concert with a equipment that gives you more attack power when you have no lives, so they do more damage. But obviously, the risk is that if you die, you die. There's no recovery from that. You can't revive. Yeah, there is no revival. And this one has a lot of health, so of you really need the extra damage. A lot of health. But we want also, it's a long this dude fight. is buff. This dude is buff. I actually did it in 17 seconds with Nira just to. <laughs> Voiced, voiced by the same guy who voices Piccolo in the olden Dragon Ball dubs. That's Piccolo, isn't it? Someone's gonna yell at me for that. So this is a tension moment. One health each. Yeah, this is a okay. Okay, you made it. Okay, Carol won. <laughs> Let's Good. go. Okay. That that was a clutch one. That was a really, really. <laughs> Uh, dense moments. Uh, I guess I should mention, ranks are based entirely on what items you have equipped and how many times you die in a stage. Since yep, there is the score system and, there is, and timing has its own rewards. Yeah, but, the, the, the yeah. ranking system doesn't factor in time whatsoever and it was like that by design because the ranking system is off my design. And it confuses it's, absolutely everyone. Like, yes, it does. It's, it's not... It's not the most well-conveyed thing. I have various regrets about that. Let's not get into it. Well, so, so, so I just want to... Yeah, I want to say something real quick. Uh, so I, I took the payback ring into this stage because yes. there's a bike like really early oh. in the stage. Um, and it makes the boss fight way more consistent. So. That makes sense. Yes, that, that was actually the same thing I was about to say. Uh, this uh, level has a very particular item set that actually is the same for some later level that involves using Bayward Ring, but also Accelerator instead of Potions, because Accelerator is really good for level, and Bayward Ring very good for level. So yeah. Yeah. it's like Chaos level. I really like it. It's like uh, two of the antagonists, actually. One called A and uh, Serpent and I are just fighting each other with their oh, yeah, different we, armies of robots. We haven't seen A on screen, have we? Because... Uh, oh, no, yeah, no, we haven't. They actually, actually, no, they follow, they follow out of the mech in, oh, when you go yeah. at the Navy Museum and also yeah. the auditorium. But yeah, uh, Ah is a uh, monkey that screams Ah a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, those of you who are familiar with League of Legends, which I imagine is most people, uh, voiced by the same person who voices Jinx, actually. Uh, I didn't know that, actually. <laughs> I didn't realize, okay. <laughs> But yeah, Ah is uh, just a kind of mild scientist. Here's the boss. They drop bombs, and that can be exploited with Carol because Carol's upkick has like very generous hit stop on it. It like stops the enemy in place for a noticeably yes. long amount of time, which will cause the bombs they just deployed to drift into them, and then the hit stop ends, and then they get hit again quite quickly. So this boss can be killed very fast. Uh, that this was only really good. Really fast. That was extremely. Good. 
this only works because for some reason this boss, uh, the, the, the boss oh, wow, doesn't help their too. attacks. Okay, I'm very happy with that. <laughs> Definitely have <laughs> to. Yeah, that's a good time. For some reason, this boss doesn't help their attacks when you hit stun them, only their movement. And that makes this whole that that whole kill possible. Yep. Other bosses will just completely halt whatever they're doing when you hit stun them. There's a boring technical reason for that, but we're on another level now. Yeah, and now we're in Nella Lake. Actually, a level that is uh, very fast paced, uh, very well, like all the rest of the game, but uh, very fun, but with some particular thing, as you might see later. For now, uh, the car is actually finding, uh, well, reaching a section with three different uh, parts to actually build our own robot. So, so uh, it's uh, really important to collect all of three yeah. in any order. Ceiling. That metal shield there is actually really important uh, because in a little bit we're going to be seeing thorns and uh, the metal shield protects you from spikes so it allows you to ride along the thorns without actually taking any damage. Yeah. Which as scale is really reason. good because it lets you do stuff like this. Ah, the vines are classed as metal Oops. elements. Yes. Oh, come on, get on the... <laughs> they're not the middle. They're middle. The riding on the surface of the water. Uh, we this. have to reroute. Yeah, but you ain't trying it actually. It's a lot easier to get onto the wall beneath. Yeah, and then turn right. around. Right. Yes, like that. So we get the full speed of float. That yeah, was way speed. worse than I <laughs> Yeah, that, that was uh, the bike was just not one to, st uh, to stick. And now we got the last part. So the robot we actually created with these parts is the same one we fought actually earlier in Elitarium. Now we are actually riding the BFF 2000. I promise you this fun. makes sense if you've seen this story. Yeah. I'm sorry, the you're riding it? Can I even make that joke? More like... Oops. Okay, um... So, well, we are actually inside uh, the BFF 2000 and controlling it. So, it has a, uh, its own character controller, and actually, you can travel all the same section you actually were running as the, as the character you were playing. But after that, after you break actually a wall, you get an exclusive section for this robot because our target is actually uh, defeating another robot. Big Behold old mech armor. fight. I blocked it. We so love the game is... mech fight. Got to. I let it go too early. Yeah, this fight is actually really tricky because uh, Titan Armor is actually shielding a lot of times, so you might want to actually charge your attacks for more power, but you have to actually check out the timing for those attacks to not be wasted by the shielding movement. Also, you have a dash attack that uh, consumes all your meter uh, that is really powerful. Uh, to clarify, you have a, 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 a attack on your normal attack button and a dash on your uh, special button. Special. And yeah. you can charge the, the, the attack for missiles and the dash for a super dash. And yes. that's about it. I was hoping to get the dash kill, but didn't quite get it for some reason. Coming in with the 59. Yeah, we are in the 59th. <laughs> that was a slang one, actually. Gravity bubble, does the power-up still spawn in the wrong place? No, they fixed this no. literally Excellent. today. Excellent! Literally yes. today. Yes, it saves a couple seconds, actually. <laughs> that makes me very happy. Yeah, for the right reasons. Uh, the item was actually spawning at the top of the water instead of there, so it was actually <laughs> taking for a like, couple seconds to get there. I didn't know that that was fixed, actually. I was setting up a joke, but actually it, it works. It, it was that literally makes... today, yes. They fixed that literally today. Yeah, like, the, the, as the, I was leaving for the studio, <laughs> uh, the lead dev of Galaxy Trail posted in the speedrun Discord, hey, there's a new patch on the beta branch. Go try it out. I was like, uh... That's funny. Why would you time it like that? But it okay. works out. We wouldn't break I, I did, I did a run. Yeah, so, I, I gravity did a, bubble. I did a run basically immediately. <laughs> Water level. Yes. It's, it's actually kind of somewhat fun to run level. because of the way, the way bike works. How it lets yeah. you react to walls and gain momentum going downwards, like that. As many other games, actually, water is uh, complicated to actually go fast, but we have the advantage of actually being able to ride walls. 
Um, that is actually a big advantage for Kero, particularly on this stage, so you can embrace walls and, well, uh, go a lot faster than if you were, like, just swimming with the bike. When you're swimming, you have a basically a set speed in which you can move up and down. Uh, when you're climbing up walls, and especially down walls, you use, you use more standard physics and can go faster. Like that. So uh, this level also has a lot of cycles, like many things that are actually platforms that are moving uh, since the... I think they're actually oh. global cycles. Okay, I was I misread that. Oops. <laughs> Aside from that, oh, this is just yeah. a long wire level, so I think this is a good time for donations. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yes, we definitely have some. We have a $25 donation from French Toast that reads, Let's get the extra boss incentive met for Freedom Planet 2 and best of luck to UA on his run. And if we want to meet that that incentive, we're going to need to start a, a $5 train here. Come on, chat. You can do it. We are super close. We're and super close. yep, almost there. Uh, we have a $50 donation from Kodiak that reads, good luck with the run, UA. Stay comfy, speed friends. Stay and we have comfy. a... <laughs> We have a $25 donation from Ann B. Dazzle that reads, Freedom Planet 2 Hi. Hi. Hi, Dazzle. Hi, Dazzle. Hi, Dazzle. Very important for the community actually developing a lot of uh, really good tools for us to practice. So they made, the, yeah, to Dazzle. They, yeah, they made the auto splitter for this game, so that's been insanely helpful. Yeah. We actually managed also... to use their code to base uh, an IL auto splitter as well, so that was cool. Sorry, uh, keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> we have a $25 donation from Parabolic that says, from one speed friend to another, thanks for everything you do, UA. And a $50 donation from Grithalmer that reads, Freedom Planet 2 was one of my favorite games from last year. Here's to showing off the secret stage. Okay, so this is where the point at which the plot really starts kicking in, and suddenly there's a giant spaceship on your tail that's firing yeah. lasers. If you get killed by that giant, I don't know if it was changed or not, but the giant laser like evaporates you. Does it still evaporate you if you get hit by it? I don't remember. That might have been. Pretty I know. Cool. Genuinely, I, I got hit, but I never died, so it's why I don't know. Okay, when 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 you get evaporated by the giant laser beam, fittingly you can't revive after death. There are very few things in the game that do that. I think that's one of them. Yeah, crush okay. death is, a, is the most common cause of that, but yeah, there are absolutely yeah. other things. Bonus boss uses that as a static mechanic. Um, so the next level is an auto-scroller. Uh, be really good. Uh, you can speed it up by killing things. That's really the only interesting mechanic. I was going to so say, donations. it's not an auto-scroller. I made sure it wasn't. How dare you? So, um, it's a shooter stage. You like it's it kind of. Kind yeah. of an auto-scroll. It's free to tradition to do donations during the sheer stage. So. Absolutely, yes. Donations, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. We have a $25 donation from Kona Rican that says, We want Weapon Core. And I agree, I also want it. Well, I want to see it. <laughs> um, we also have a $100 donation from BT Savage that reads, Do I want to see more AGDQ? Heck yeah, I do. Let's get this incentive. And a $40 donation from Raphael Ventura that reads, Hi, Freedom Planet 2 animator here. So weird to see a game we worked on for seven years being run in two hours. Also, Happy Carol was chosen. She's my favorite character and in fact, one of the first things I animated for the game. So you're looking at six to seven years old animations there. <laughs> Actually kind of crazy to realize that, but the ones I had more fun were definitely Kala, or sorry, Kalal and Askal. I hope I yes. pronounced that correctly. Yeah, pretty good. Anyway, have fun. Cheers. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's put a smile on my face. Also, it occurs to me, Chad is completely correct. This is an airboat, like literally. It oh, is yeah. an airboat. Hey, it's airboat. more that the boats are air. The airships are boat shaped. I cannot believe I didn't think of that. Thank you, chat. It is lore. It is true. Oops. Okay, I still got it. It was predicted by the texts. 
Right, we have a boss here. The boss is a giant enemy crab. There's an old one for you. I just aged half of the chat with that one. So obviously you have a sweet spot. You can just stay there and shoot and, well, you're fine. Okay, despite dying, that's like Very only fast. four Say, seconds behind Archie, the record. What was that boss so. called again? Giant enemy crab. Oh. I think it's got an actual name, but I don't remember what it is. Uh, the actual name, I think, is Gravion. I, I don't sounds remember. right. <laughs> sounds I right. I don't remember. I don't know if it comes up anywhere in the actual game. I think it might just it be doesn't. bias. It doesn't. I, I, like, uh, I think the museum has it labeled. Am no, I the museum it? doesn't label the bosses. They just have like really? their pictures of them. Yeah, some of these things only have names in like internal data. They don't have okay, them like. I should forward, probably but... clarify. There's this whole side quest where you fill out museum with boss parts using the three types of currency that you collect. Oh yeah. That's an adventure mode explosive feature. Yeah. And that's this is as more as I know about it. I, I actually know the names of the bosses also because they're actually the battle sphere when you actually select to practice them. Um, but there are a couple you cannot find there. This is one of them. Uh, the other one is uh, the one in Lunar Cannon, a couple levels after this. So, so well, Rails. Now that shield lasted two seconds. So, oh, this right. is yeah. the start of the final set of levels. Uh, like, like how Final Dreadnought was, except these yeah. are each a full actual level. Yeah, uh, this is uh, like the final journal section, but like uh, four times as long. If we're gonna get that uh, weapon score and sensor, then it's gonna be about what twenty more minutes. Sounds about right. Yeah. Get those in. We we'll are less level. less than thousand dollars. We are nine hundred and twenty dollars really away, so we're super close. We have like 15, ten to fifteen minutes, I think. It's a bit more than that, isn't it? Whatever. I think I mean, it's, the, fi the final yeah, boss like is at least three minutes, minutes so. Uh, I'm gonna say that I would love to actually see you a uh, playing through the Battle Sphere challenges, so please donate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing the Battle Sphere challenges. I'm loading his And here, Serpentine turns. Oh. Serpentine? Serpentine. <laughs> <laughs> well, still, the weapon core is uh, kind of brutal, though, so <laughs> I oh, will yeah. enjoy watching that. And here we have uh, something resembling pinball. Yeah, the gadgets. Uh, they're like, um, they're there. I mean, there are blocks you can only break with them, so you have to actually route them properly. Actually, I found out that in this uh, in this section now, you can actually break it with only three, but it's really slow because you have to do top, 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 and getting to the top again after the first one is like super slow. <laughs> but yeah, you can actually do it with three instead of four. I, I usually, I meant to take the top route uh, just because it's easier, but then I got caught by the ring, so... Yeah. Then we have these hang bears that I think they're cycle based actually, because the position you are on them actually... Whoa! Ooh, whoa, 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 that, that was, was close. close. It, there, there's not problems really there, he will just gone back, but it's still pretty easy to get my boss. Ugh. I'll be honest oh. with you, the, these like weird swing hang bars are probably my least favorite mechanic in the game. I, I never use them exactly. intentionally. Uh, I don't really love it, but it's not that terrible to me. I mean, you can go fast actually out of them, but yeah, the cycles probably are a bit annoying to run. Hey, what? What the heck is that? Oh. Uh, All right. Okay. Enough, you can These last few stages have some of the best music in the game, in my opinion. We are $625 away! Ooh. Oh wow, that was a jump of like, what, $300 in what, two minutes? Yeah, it's super, we're super close, chat, you can do it, I believe! I swear, our uh, weapon score is actually a really complicated level, and you really want to watch uh, UA playing through it. This part of the stage is why nobody likes running this stage because uh, yeah, the people these stage, pinball yeah. bits are completely random. Well, they're not. They're they're, uh, they're, they're on global cycles, but still. random. It's just very hard to predict. Yeah, sorry. Uh, that was, they're on global I'm cycles. being I'm being particular. That's my job. There's a way to actually sp uh, skip that one uh, using the previously mentioned layer clips. Um, 
I think every character can actually get there. I think Mila is the only one that probably has some hard time getting. Where Gerald is actually really complicated to get uh, to the end. I, I apologize, Gerard, by the way, like for... I apologize for anybody who hates coughing noises, the by the way. For the first two <laughs> phases, but then this phase comes along and it's a little more interesting. Though, it's still, I think we have time for one donation here. Oh, yeah, for sure. Perfect. We have a $50 donation from Event Horizon Uwu that says, Hi, one of the testers for this game. Super excited to see people running this and be sure to donate for the special box so we can see more of this phenomenal game. Hey. Not that name, by the way. We are less than $600 away from the incentive being met, so let's keep really that knows. train going. We have four, five levels left? Four or five sounds discounting, right, yeah. Discounting, uh, discounting the core, which isn't part of this run, technically. Five levels. Okay, and this one is a boss fight, so it's gonna be a really good one. This refinery room, you already fucked uh, a scale in Diamond Point and uh, several times, but you never fight them together, so this is the time for it. It's one of those kinds of dual fights where the fight changes depending on who dies first. Like, they have a different, like, desperation yeah. phase, so you kind of want to line it up so that they die at roughly similar times, but that's actually kind of hard, because Askel has got a lot more life than R does. And he's harder yeah. to reach. Yeah, yeah, and he's hard. This is on purpose. It's very rare that uh, Askel dies before R does, but he does have an entirely unique set of, like, attack data for if that yeah. scenario should crop up. They have, and you can tell something actually about that, is that Ascal is actually the, is the hardest to kill first. Normally you have to like heavy focus Ascal to take it, uh, to take, take him down first. But if you do, actually Ah uh, is jumping one side to the other and it's really annoying and really hard to hit, so probably you really want to kill first Ah. Uh. Both phases get really hard if you kill one guy first, so this one rather well overall though. Yeah, yeah there was something I think is trying to kill both uh, pretty much at the same time. Yeah, that so, fight is uh, really visually busy too. It's gonna be it's hard for me to keep track of what's going on sometimes. Yeah, it is. it is. There's a lot going on. That's the fight I'm scared the most of dying on if I do like the payback ring strategy. Not the final boss, mm -hmm. that one. That one doesn't worry too much. I think Diamond's point is definitely the scariest yeah. one to run. Damn point is a lot harder in that sense. Damn point, it's harder to so attack the boss without getting attacked in return. Yeah. Uh, this oh, stage, way, you're I... gathering keys to move an elevator up floor by floor. Yeah, if I could make a request, uh, would it be possible for the keys to just insert if you're holding up as you pass by instead of having to slow down a little bit? I'll lodge it and see what can be done. I second that request. Thank you, I appreciate that. I, I, I say that with venom in my voice. I swear this isn't why I invited you. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Less than $200 to go. Oh, Ooh, baby. We're really close. Oh, baby. Really close, let's go. So. Well, basically, Clockwork Arboretum is still a level that you have eight floors and you have to collect a key in every floor and get back to move the elevator. So, well, that's very much the explanation about it. Enjoy the show, and well, that, I guess we have time for the That boss just trolled you. Yeah, he, yep, the bike locked onto him. I think it, it wasn't too bad, but... Uh, yeah, also, the, yeah, the, 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 there's, there's just enemies. bosses in the levels now. But because of tension, I guess. That's where all the robots come from. That's where they live. Yeah, this is kind of like a um, no, that, biosphere they come from stage, which like it's got it's got like samples from the planet. Like every every section in here is like a previous stage, sort of. Yeah, it's a, it's a giant garden. It's an arboretum. Like because the final boss is like the the main villain's hobby is gardening. But this is one of the things that is just uh, about this game is that you should always give your main villain just a completely benign hobby. In this case, it's gardening. She likes plants. You know, I believe you, and I'm not sure if I should. Have we even I'm, spoken I'm telling, about her I'm, yet? I'm completely telling the truth. Okay, all right. H have we even spoken about the villain at all at this point? No, not really. I mean, it's like it's, it's like a game that's like nine hours long normally, and I'm going to discuss the plot. 
That's yes, right. sir. I, I, I honestly am mostly trying to avoid spoilers, but I mean, as, as much as it's possible when showing off a speed run. It's I a really relatively do think, new game after all. Yeah, yeah and I really yeah. do think it, I, I, it's, I'm sure it's going to sound backhanded, but the story Bandler is really Mark? very, the story is very much improved from the original, so. <laughs> okay. Incentive met. Incentive met. Whoa. Thank you very much, everyone. Awesome. Awesome. Thank awesome. you very much, everyone. Also, don't worry about the backhanded thing. I assure you, we're used to it. Oh, this got fixed today, too. The camera actually... Actually, yeah. <laughs> this was fixed in the beta that, again, released today. Joy. Yeah, the camera was, uh, there, the game has zoom levels, and the camera did very funny things with the zoom level that I like to use. Also, you can, you're not supposed to be able to do that, but you can just kind of drop through that floor that's supposed to show up there and skip the entire return trip. Yep, yep. fast enough, it works. Oh, yep. yeah, this, uh, <laughs> for launchers, <laughs> bonkers, uh, these are really annoying. That was, uh, that was pretty bad. <laughs> you already want them out. But the problem is that if you are too close from them, you just bonk on them, so you cannot actually attack. It cancels your attack animation, so you have to time it very well. Okay, that was the last long floor. The next now floor have... uh, just has the key, pretty much. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's very much the area. last checkpoint. This is just here to be a checkpoint. Oops. Yeah. And so this uh, is a boss that you skip as Carol normally in the first... Whoa. Okay, bye, bike. <laughs> no, I wasn't that expecting goes. that. You still got yeah, the bike is, in your inventory. But. This is Corey. She normally shows up earlier, but because they're, like, sisters, you don't fight her where other characters do. She has a gun. That's her thing. Other, You know, like, every other character has, like, cool ninja powers or, like, is a slightly magical being. Uh, Corey has a gun. She it's shoots you with it. The kid that's a sister of Carol, and that com and comes with that kind of acrobatics in the first game. It's not really shown here, but she uses the jump pounds from, from the first game. That's true. Yeah, so this fight takes place in free fall, yeah. which has interesting implications for the physics, because you can kind of yeah, run up the walls yeah. and stuff. And you're always kind of drifting around, which makes getting accurate disc shots actually quite difficult. Yeah, I definitely screwed up the pattern already, but... The disc has a habit of drifting off power, because if, like, if you hold up while you're sort of drifting to the right, it doesn't tend to go straight up, it kind of goes up at an angle. It's a lot of a learning process, this one. It takes a lot of practice. Yeah, because also if you try to attack at the same time you're riding a wall, uh, riding the wall is actually going to cancel your attacks, so you have to be careful about that. So, well, this is uh, actually my actual favorite level. Probably for the wrong reasons too, but actually it's really fun to speedrun. It's really easy to get lost as casual uh, when you play the game for the first time, but speedrunning is like a really nice level. In version Dynamo is plenty of these teleporters and a lot of uh, speed preservation sections, a lot of puzzles. Uh, I guess will, right? I'm not sure actually on this one. Hmm. The reason why I rode through the bike and then uh, got back on it right there was because there's a small glitch where if you uh, move into a bike pickup while you're locked in a certain direction, say you're drop kicking, uh, your direction will remain locked until you get off the bike and get back on it again. Yeah. Huh. Just a tiny little time loss, no big deal, but there was a reason for that. Yeah, I mean, this level has some cycles, so actually that might cost you a cycle, so... There are like three second cycles with the blocks right after the first checkpoint, so after the second checkpoint, I mean, after the cutscene. So, yeah, uh, yeah it, the, probably uh, it could mess up the cycles. The, the vanishing blocks from Avian Museum show up again here. And yeah, but now they're, here with the they're serpentine They're actually in the way now. Oh, whoops, that's not where to go. So, there are very funny routes and puzzles on this stage. So you can actually take all the way. Uh, you're gonna spawn in the, in a portal uh, that is in the same position and carrying your momentum previous to that. So depending on where you enter the portal and what speed you have is how you get launched off of, of it. So uh, should note though, it doesn't it doesn't take your exact position into account. Yeah, you I'm sorry, I need you to shut up for a second. Portal. Please, yeah, please stop more talking. like a relative. Yeah. Hello. Oh yeah, right. Talking. Serious Thank side. you. 
Okay. Alright. Ah. Didn't have quite enough height. Might be okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Same trial, same let's go. Let's give, that. give us actual really good. 30 seconds to a minute of stage right there. It's, oh, it's it, 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 you, you just kind of jump around the, the half, uh, a, a significant chunk of the stage. Yeah, we mentioned actually earlier about uh, Dazzle. Another of the resources uh, provided were actually the maps of the stages. So one of the runners of the game, actually, uh, Miller Runner, Yuki, was actually looking at the map and he was like, oh, we can actually get there. And well, now everyone skipped uh, 30 second section thanks to that. It's a very difficult jump. Yes. Particularly as Carol. Very precise. The Arcaders have a bit of an easier time with it, I think. I, do, I, would, I don't know. It varies. It varies by character. Most things do. So a lot of uh, mortal parties and getting to the final boss of the stage, which is uh, again Titan Armor, the one we fought in Nalo Lake, having a mech. But this time, we don't have a mech, and it has a lot of health. It's a really yeah. difficult bike. It's why it's bike. very, very good that there's a bike so right in this stage, because you need all the damage you can get from this boss. Yeah, once again, that, UA I'm so Rathy. glad that, Ra that auto fire got added for Carol, because this boss was a nightmare on my arm before that. Yeah. Well, that was very intense, though. So, uh, I don't yeah, know if the health bar down already. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, I don't know if I'm right for saying this, but donations? Yeah, you go for it. Perfect. Absolutely. We have a lot. We have a $5 donation from Shinobi J that says, This GDQ has been awesome, and this Freedom Planet 2 run has been great. Let's see this Weapon Core secret stage. This donation is in honor of my stepmom, who's battling cancer. We also have a $10 donation from David that reads, You all do an awesome job. Freedom Planet 2 was my favorite game last year. Here is some money for the Weapon Core. And we also, we also have a $50 donation from Templar Warden that says, It was GDQ that introduced me to the first Freedom Planet, and I had a blast playing it. I didn't know there was a sequel. Here's for charity, and as thanks for showing off great games. So right here, uh, first off, you can exchange the two secondary currencies for directly for the gold gems. Uh, and then we bought the Mellotron because this stage has a lot, a lot of electricity hazards. And the Mellotron means we don't take damage from those. Yeah, and those are metal elements, so you nullify the damage with them, with the seal. Uh, specifically, when you touch a wall, uh, Whenever you touch a wall on this stage, uh, all walls and floors re uh, will zap you after a brief moment. As Carol, we spend a lot of time on the walls, so we kind of don't want to deal with that. The shield health stacks in this game, so like when he broke the extra shield there, he now has four shield hits instead of two. Making the oh yeah, that is the new thing. Uh, if so you can find enough shield, shield, shield pickups, it gets ridiculous. You can end up with like, what's the cap? 13? 12? Uh, I don't know actually, it's, but it's I, actually I was gonna out. say that there's also a potion you can buy, uh, the same as the attack potions on the accelerator that is uh, giving you more hits for your shields. So basically, you can combine that with a shield start and have like, I don't know, like 16 hits in the shield from the beginning of the stage. It's I'm not really the limit is health. 12, but I could be wrong The max is two it's times, two max, times health. max health. So it's 12 okay. shield points. It's all okay. Uh, this stage also has this weird anti-gravity mechanic that uh, just kind of carries your momentum. It makes this boss uh, a bit difficult to maneuver around because uh, the game has this subtle little thing where every time you attack a boss in midair, it moves you up just a bit. So if we are attacking this boss and we're midair, we're going to start rocketing up and away from the boss. They're trying to stay very grounded for this because of that, although you take a lot of damage on this fight really fast. Yeah, like this, that, yeah. this fight That's is very, scary. very aggressive. 
Yeah, there's a thing uh, I don't think we mentioned, and is that uh, with certain oh. hits, actually, you get armor. And getting armor actually makes you uh, get less damage and your animations not being cancelled. So it's important actually to find what hits actually have armor and use them in the right moments For to actually prevent knockback. The big super armor source is going to be Wild Claw. Yeah, I was hoping to kill the boss when it was still on the ground because if you if you're sitting on it and it's and it's in the down center and you stand there, you'll pick up the card immediately and it saves a couple seconds. All right, final boss time. This is not attack, attack, as attack. scary as you, not as scary as you might think, but it's definitely uh, still somewhat scary. So Doing it yeah. with no lights, going for the maximum You're damage loadout. Will be a masterpiece. Hmm. Yeah, this the boss is actually is that, uh, this boss doesn't yeah. have that much health. But uh, it has that much health times six. Because there's six phases. We go through distinct phases of the moon. That's their gimmick. Yes. Well, they do also. Co well, they don't all correspond to an element, but this one does. This one's water. So if you equip like a water shield here, you're completely invulnerable to pretty much every attack they do. Oh. But that takes an item slot, and thus you can't use maximum damage loadout. So you got to do it the real way if you want to go fast. And anyways, every phase has a different element, so... Well, this one would be nullified actually by a fire shield. Uh, Blue Moon is actually a very fast one, overall, for every character. So, we move on on the third one. Actually, you get a little bit of health every time you beat a phase. We're thinking through this. Yeah. So now Super Moon that actually waves and moves a lot and gets this invulnerability move movement. You have to wait for the right moment to actually hit Merga again. And after this, thank you, Punchy. Checkpoint. Yeah, the, <laughs> you don't have to thank me for that, but yeah, they, they used to not be one early. This in next phase uh, goes invisible, except not quite fully. It's hard to see now that I look at it again, but. Uh, yeah, you, kind of track you really want to deal as much damage as you can to the boss because at, at this at this point they go invincible. Oh, that was close. close. Almost got it, but not quite. Yeah, I, I picked the wrong shadow. It splits into four and only one of them hits. Yeah. There is actually a way to notice which one is, but you have to be really fast on your eye for that. So, yeah, uh, punchy, like the real one. Ah, uh, yeah, this is Lilith. Uh, it's the name of the, of the moon phase. What, what moon phase? <laughs> the moon thing. They're, they're all moons. Yeah, yeah, but I've never ever heard of a moon phase called Lilith. Well, it's because it's moon flowers. Like I said, the villain's hobby is gardening. Uh, okay, I've never heard of moon flowers. Well, uh, they're, they're I, a I, thing. I, the yeah, game tells okay. you about them. <laughs> Read the lore. Okay, one, one last funny thing here. Oh yeah, so we have for to restart. For whatever reason, the reset, resetting to this checkpoint uh, removes the barriers at the edge of the arena, and you can do something kind of funny. Yeah, it doesn't huh. let yeah. you leave the arena, but it does prevent you from grabbing onto them. Well, assuming I got her in the right spot, ah, right. messed it up. Right. Unbelievable. Uh, wait. Maybe, oh, maybe. there you go. Good. There we go. You got it. Okay. She's good. Okay, nice. So you can just... actually. This is what you can do thanks to that. Uh, sure because there's health. no wall to stop you, you can just sit in the corner and wow claw for the rest of the fight. And that was really fast. Very GG. fast. Yeah. Um, so oh, time is not actually, yet. that is time. Time is not, time is not after yet. No, this. no, no, it's not time. Time is not yet. Um, it's I'm after scared. the Gatsun skip, the next Gatsun skip. It's very, it's very soon, though, like five seconds from now. What is that? Uh, Why is Carol... It, it, it locked the animation. Frame. Uh, yeah, but still, okay, that was a weird time. frame. Time. time. GG. All right. That was time. And the reason that's time is because that's when the game timer stops counting. My name so flashed by really time. fast there. <laughs> yeah. Time was. All right. Lots of I'll scrolling. 140. That's pretty cool. good for marathon setting. 140. Good marathon yeah. performance. I'm, I'm, I'm decently happy with that. It's not a PB, but whatever. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm just going to get right into the... Uh, the incentive since we met it, right? Yep, right. Go ahead. Okay. So this is the only stage I have this unlocked on. Um, let's just go. Yes, oh, this is sorry, the secret I... stage. Normally, 
unlocked by completing a series of optional challenges and revealing a bunch of hidden lore about the game world that Frogmoss clearly didn't read. <laughs> <laughs> So you do that, yeah. you get a I secret hidden level. I, I, I guess I just missed that one specific line. <laughs> anyway, this is Weapons Core. It's at the core of the big spaceship that what witch tries to eat the moon. That's a thing that happens oh, yeah. in this game. Oh, we rather we glossed over that. that. So yeah, we have the Lightning Tower puzzles, but also we have a very specific uh, gimmick on this stage. And it's that if you stay, I think, if you stay so long in one place, it, it was like that. See that spotlight yeah. that's kind of faint but following the character? So yeah, basically you cannot linger or you get uh, instant kill, so it, it, you it, want uh, to be moving all the time. Casually, that's probably going to kill everyone, uh, but we're speedrunners, so we don't really care. Yeah, usually there's a meter on the left side of the screen that shows like how alerted the boss is to your presence, and when it maxes out, they instantly kill you with no recourse. But uh, UA's been moving so fast, the meter hasn't actually appeared yet. Oh yeah, appears. actually, there, once it oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Well, the we have to stay appears. for the bosses. Once there's something to measure, but he was going so fast, he sort of stopped the hunt element from appearing. Okay. Well, actually, this run thing seems very clean so far. Yeah, this is a very clean run. I'm actually a little off my helmet here. I don't run this stage. Uh, I there's there is one Mila run of this stage on the boards, and that's it. That <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nobody nobody has run this stage. So yeah, uh, on top of having to deal with spotlight, you're also dealing with mechanics that require you to stand still. So, yay. Yep, that's the mixture. <laughs> I'm, I'm also, those blocks are not really helping. I got. I had to reset the spark because I got caught by the block. I was not gonna make it. You will. I believe you will. Yeah, nope, got it nice and clean. Got it on the Okay, good, 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 good. That's the large puzzle room, I think. Just, uh, yes, just want to quickly say that a new incentive has uh, opened for Blinks the Time Sweeper upgrade to all medals that has to be met before the beginning of that run. So we're at 1,800 out of 5,000, so get those donations in quickly if you want to see that. Ooh, I do. Yeah, anyway, so this, this is, is this is the, yes, the true I mean, now final I'm boss. Sure. The true, true final boss. You are joined in this by your friends, who I kind of absentmindedly move around and sometimes do things that are useful. <laughs> this, this <laughs> yeah. This betrayed me one last time. I'm gonna miss the phase. God damn it. Well, they're still better than Carol in Free on Planet One when you play uh, Fortunate as Lilac. Okay, if that hits you, it instantly kills you. you it's it's not yeah. just an instant kill. Uh, it also destroys you, so you can't revive. Like. Like how Bungie was talking about earlier. Yes. So the after thing taking boss, three faces down, well, the boss actually healed now, so yeah. we have to start over again. Yeah, I have to knock it down to three health twice, and then the final phase starts. Oh, uh, yeah. really? Oh, uh, the boss doesn't attack. Attack. switch phases it, no phase when, it, when it's attacking. So. Yeah, yeah. I, it got into this phase before. Okay. The loop. It's gotta okay. The loop. So, cats in time. Merga is now helping us. Oh, sorry, spoilers. Okay, and now we have uh, the final boss without him. I mean, we're showing the secret final boss on stream. It's the time. Yeah, I mean, fast. what is the spoiler if you're watching the final secret boss? I mean, the... we don't even know what the final boss is without context. Probably not. Anyway, UA is. This is tense. Oh, that's, that's no, gonna dangerous. be tense. This fight's actually pretty difficult casually. I say pretty di I mean really difficult casually. Oh yeah, I'm bringing his back. In the scaring form me. of a hologram. Yeah, oh, sick wares. Wow, this is... Oh, 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 oh that was so close. That was actually some sick dodges there. That sucks a lot, okay. This, this stage specifically, because probably because the boss is so hard, gives you infinite continues, but we still have to start the boss fight over, sadly. Yeah, the worst uh, part about it is that the no stocks is bugged, and I actually have two lives, which means I'm going to be doing this less damage. Yes, uh, it's going to be less damage. Still, 
Yeah, sadly that was not one of the things they fixed today. Uh, but it's it's on the list. <laughs> I have a loot. Uh, I told actually Sabrina about that the other day. Yeah, I mean to be fair, like I didn't even know about that until like Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the discussion about that was like I don't know a week ago, I think. I don't yeah, remember if this is if it has to heal again. Oh, uh, uh, it yeah, does. I, Damn. I think it heals yeah. once. Okay, it only heals oh, once. once after. Oh, okay, after only continue. once. Yeah, I, I knew there was something different about that. I played this stage like only two times. <laughs> oh no, more like three. But yeah. I'm okay. Wait a minute. I have I have extra lives. Yeah, you can you can do it. Honestly, yeah. it, th this is risky, but I would consider just. Taking loss during phases where you can't really attack the loss much, so you get the uh, attack boost at zero stop. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I already died once. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not, not precisely the safest option right now. <laughs> you revive with only like half a health tackle as well, which you give him like yeah. two hits at maximum. Because that quirk of this game's the, health the, system. The knife phase makes me the most nervous. You always have a last chance hit point, except for the the one hit KO attack we talked about earlier. That, yeah, like I, I have seen people actually doing run with that, and that's insane. Also, hi, Brevin. Nice to see you here. Yeah. The classic knife attack. It was a very violent attack in Freedom Planet 1. It, it's just a hologram here, but it's still pretty dangerous. Okay. Ah, there we go. go. GG. Well done. And... Time is when the time. 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 And that was my final question. And secret. Uh, no. Weapons Core is the name? Yeah. yeah. We Weapons, Weapons Core, Core is the Core. name of the stage, yes. Okay. <laughs> the boss is named Bakanawa Fusion. Um, For a moment, I thought the level was named Secret Low. <laughs> my, my bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that I died to that, but honestly, like, if I was going to die anywhere, it was going to be there, so. Uh, only having to retry that once is still fine. It's the secret boss. It was made to be hard. Yep. Yes. The, the first time, the first time I beat, I beat this secret boss, I want to say my level time was thirty-five minutes. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think about that too. It, and and that was with an easier item. <laughs> so, ah, uh, wow. Uh, I just want to say thanks so much for uh, to the games committee for letting me do this. Um, I was talking to Spike earlier and realizing that I probably at the moment have the biggest gap between my first GDQ run and longest GDQ run because I don't think anybody in either CGDQ or the first AGDQ has run this marathon. And so I currently have the biggest gap between first and most recent run. So I think that's pretty cool. Honestly, just like it was, it's really good to be able to get up on the stage like this with something new. Thanks so much to my commentators because uh, they they really they really helped carry the the explanation so that I could concentrate. So I really appreciate that. Thanks to you for inviting. Yep, thanks for having us. Yes, thanks Bye, for having Planet us. Bye, Planet 2. We worked really hard on it. Yay! It's really good. If you if you thought this game looked cool, go buy it right now. It's amazing. I'm yep. obligated to do the, the, the advertising thing. <laughs> I am legally obligated to agree. <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks, y'all. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. Thanks for uh, pitching in for the incentive. And uh, have a good night. Bye-bye.